Hello and welcome to Wednesday Bible Study. This is Pastor Logan. Let's pray and then we're going to get right into the Word. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this time together. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity to gain and to learn and to, to know more about you and how we fit within your kingdom. And so we thank you for thinking through my mind and speaking through my lips. Words that will edify us, provoke us to change and change our very lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we're going to do a recap uh, of Romans uh, 14, uh, what we covered last week, and then uh, actually finish, I believe, Romans chapter 14. And as we're getting ready to go into Romans 14, verse 13, starting in verse 13, I just want you to consider um, uh, what this is really all about. What What is this that Paul is trying through multiple chapters, trying to get us to understand about this new life we have in Christ or in King Jesus? What is it really all about? What have we what have we been afforded? What is this life that we've now entered into? Is it more than just missing hell and going to heaven? Is there something more to it? And I would say yes. I would say he's teaching us after being uh, um, outside how to now live inside, how now to live inside the kingdom of God. And so um, we've gotten into uh, judging and trying to define what it means to be non-judgmental. What does that look like for us? Uh, is, it, is it talking about uh, we allow everything and anything to go? Is immorality all right? Uh, can we live any way uh, we want to live? And here's what I would say uh, to those, and I think the point Paul is trying to get us to see uh, in this whole big grand scheme of thing is that God trusts his grace. God trusts his grace. He doesn't never need to give us laws and rules and regulations to govern our lives by. He gives us his grace down the in, on the inside of us, and he trusts that grace. He trusts the grace to perform. He trusts the grace to get us to not only in image, but in behavior to what he wants us to be. And he, he gives us his nature. His nature really is that, is that DNA of grace that he puts down in that, that part of himself that he gives us. And he says the kingdom of God is kind of like a small seed that is sown and, and it seems to be so obscure and, and nothing much to it. But then it grows up to be the greatest of all. And I believe the kingdom of God, the kingdom of King Jesus, the grace of God is like that. He trusts that little bitty seed. He believes that it will come out to something super and great and, and that we will desire to live holy lives, that we'll desire to put off the old man and put on the new man, and we'll desire to walk in love with one another uh, without a need to pass judgment. Uh, and so that's what it's really all about. You know, we make it so very difficult, almost to the point where uh, if we're all being truthful, uh, we're, we're, we're the most unhappy people in the world because we don't understand what God has given to us. So we're just going through it. It's kind of almost, excuse my language here, but almost damned if you do, damned if you don't. Like, I, I, don't, I, I don't like living this life, but I'm afraid to leave it. That's the state of many Christians is because they don't understand the power of grace, not the power of law, not the power of pulling and tugging and pushing, but the power of an inward work working on the inside of us, producing, producing constantly the life of Christ in us and love towards other people. And here's how we live together. So um, as we finish out chapter 14, uh, verse 13 says, Therefore, let us not pass judgment on one another any longer, but rather decide never to put a stumbling block or a hindrance in the way of a brother. So that's the beginning of, of what we're going to talk about here. He says, he says let's never pass judgment. Let's, let's make a decision. Let's cut the old ways of thinking, and let's make a decision today that we're not going to pass judgment on small, peony uh, things that really matter very little. They matter only within the realm of religion, of man doing things to get to God. 
But in the grand scheme of things, in our relationship with God and with our relationship with others, let's not pass judgment on the things that matter so very little. And while we're at it, um, it's okay if you want to keep those little things. He says, I love you anyway. You don't necessarily need them, but if that's what you need to feel okay, he says, I'm all right with that. It's okay because I trust my grace to get you to a point where you'll see that it's no longer necessary and no longer needed. And many times that's what we have to do with people is keep them on the line long enough for this gospel to truly take root in their souls, where they begin to be the most free and most liberated of people, while at the same time the most moral and holy people. That's what we're talking about. All right? So he says, let's decide never, never to put a stumbling block or a hindrance in the way of a brother. So that means that we are we are constantly in this new life we have in King Jesus. We are looking out for one another. We are, are not allowing their scruples to affect us one way or the other. And we will not allow ourselves to be affected by their scruples to be uh, utterly uh, unconcerned about the things that, that make them tick, the things that they feel are, if they do them, they might sin. He says, as we said in church, we need to learn how to bend. We need to learn how to bend. We need to learn how to be flexible. Those who are strong, be flexible to those who are weak. And always remembering that sometimes the weak are the ones who seem like they're doing uh, all the things right because the being right in, by law is so vitally important to them. He says, just be flexible. Boy, if we could learn to do that. Learn, learn flexibility. Learn how to bend. Learn how to realize that not everyone is going to see things the same way. Not everyone is going to do things the same way. Not everyone is at the same point of faith and maturity of grace as others. And those who are the most mature in their grace need to be the most flexible, need to be the ones who bend the most. All right? So he says, um, in the way of better, I know and am persuaded in the Lord that, that nothing is unclean in itself, but it is unclean for anyone who thinks it's unclean. Now, we're talking about uh, in, in matters concerning religious protocols, uh, what you eat, what you drink, uh, those types of things that in some uh, religious institutional way um, make a person feel like, man, I'm doing it. You know, I, I kept it. Um, these are the things that I do. These are the things that makes me, assures my heart that I'm all right with God. Um, and, and he's saying, you know, if that's what you need, so be it. Let those who don't need all of those things bend. Be flexible with the person that does. Remember, again, we're not talking about immorality. We're not talking about um, fornication and, and adultery and lying and cheating and stealing and 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 all of the things that we would we would consider um, uh, the immoral things it's not oh um, let us just all uh, get alone uh, and let us all be uh, uh, immorally in a in a sea of sin and deprivation all together and just think it's okay no it's it's not okay but the grace of God will work. When a person's heart is truly born again, there are things that they will leave off. They will let them go. So we need to need to, to be very conscious as to how we we come at people. Sometimes people need a, a, a long rope in, in order for them to kind of get over some stuff that they've been doing all their life. You know, uh, the only thing that changes about you and I when we are born again is our spirit. The mind still has to be renewed. The body still wants to gravitate to whatever the mind will allow it to go. And sometimes we just have to give enough time for people to get the grace of God to flow through them uh, in that sense of a non-judgmental way. That doesn't mean that we don't call people up higher. So we're talking about two different things, morally and uh, religiously, or those types of things that are, are religious, which is the ones he's talking about here. But at the same time, we just need to create an atmosphere where people are okay with not being okay yet. <laughs> because we are okay 
um, because of what has been done down on the deep crevices of us or in our spirit. We are truly new creations, but it may take a little time for it to be worked out. Well, uh, if the motivation is there, the behavior will come. If the motivation is not there, the behavior will not come, and that type of person truly needs to be confronted from an from, from a, a unholy or immoral way of living, whatever that immorality might be. Okay? For if your brother is grieved by what you eat, you are no longer walking in love. Remember the language of the kingdom. The atmosphere of the kingdom of God is love. It's walking in love. And because of love, there's no need, as we've learned earlier in the chapters ahead, up behind us, that there's no need for law when there's love. When there's love, there's no need for law. When people learn how to walk in love, when people not learn how to exercise love, just like exercising faith, there's no longer need for law. And he says here, if a person is not considerate of their brother, that person is no longer walking in love. So a lot of times when people are, are saying that they're walking in love, but have a zero tolerance for everything and everyone around them, are they really walking in love? Not according to the scripture. Because in the scripture it says, if your brother is grieved by what you eat, you are no longer walking in love or by what you drink, or whatever the case may be. And as we talked about Sunday, you know, the Bible doesn't say you cannot drink something that is alcoholic or alcohol content in it. It does speak of, of in the Proverbs and other places about getting drunk, you know, drinking to excess, you know, uh, being sloppy uh, drunk. But it doesn't necessarily say anything about, about the, the drinking of an alcoholic beverage whether it be beer or wine or, or, or whatever. But, but, but for those who think that it's sin, then it is sin to them. And for those who don't think necessarily that it is sin, if I drink a beer, if it offends your brother and if it grieves them, then, then, then it, is, it is sin. You're not longer walking in love. So let the stronger brother abstain from that which the weak feels condemned if he does. All right? And, and, and so the... the uh, the objective for, quote, not drinking, which I don't drink, I don't drink alcohol, um, and, and my purpose behind it is not that I can't, it's not that I don't have the freedom to, it's not because the Bible says all things are, are lawful, but not everything is expedient. It's not expedient for me to drink because my drinking might cause someone else or affect someone else that I'm around negatively. Now, if that's not the case for you, maybe you're in an environment where uh, it's been a cultural norm for some time and your drinking doesn't affect anyone, then then so be it if, I'm, if you're a Christian, if that's what you want to do. But I would challenge you in this area is what you do, and let's just say you're, you're a parent. If you're a parent and you drink in front of your children and your children say, mm, well, that's okay, that must be all right, to drink, and maybe you're you're fine with it. That that's that's you and your household. I won't judge you about it, but I need you to understand that sometimes even our kids will take it the wrong way. They will they will not be able to handle uh, drinking. And uh, and if any of you have been to college, and you've been to to uh, uh, pre uh, not what they call it um, uh, tailgate parties and. Everybody's out there having a good time. Everyone's drinking. Everyone's getting a little loosey goosey, um, uh, and then and then it perpetuates itself over time. And then a lot of people have made some tremendous errors of their life because early on they saw it okay to do so. And and again, the issue is not the issue is not drinking or not. The issue is, am I walking in love with those around me? And some may say, no one around me has a problem with it. And some may say, you know what? If I drink, I know I'm going to create a kind of a uh, domino effect. Others are going to be affected by it. So, so you make the call, but allow grace to define for you whether or not it's right or whether it's wrong for you. You've got to stand before your master there. I hope that's clear. 
it's not just drinking. It's a whole. It's a whole lot of other things as well. But he's primarily talking. I think we can all identify uh, with that. Okay. Uh, let's see. For if your brothers grieve by what you eat, you are no longer walking in love by what you eat. Do not destroy the one for whom Christ died. In other words, if by what you eat or by what you drink, you don't want to. You don't want to mess someone else up. You don't want to. You know, they may have such a difficult time dealing with what you're doing so freely that it just messes them up. And then they try to do what you're doing freely, and now they feel condemned and, and away from God and, and, uh, and, and, and can't go talk to Him anymore. Uh, all, all of those things, uh, all because we weren't considerate of our brother. So we need to be considerate, in all things considerate, in all things, in every way. Let's be considerate of our brother's. Then he goes on, he says, so do not let your regard, what you regard as good, be spoken of as evil. Don't you let those things, so, so, so we can say it like this, as Moffat says it, your rights must not get a bad name. Your rights, your, your rights, your privileges, don't let them have a bad name by the way you handle them. You know, sometimes it's, it's important for us just to understand responsibility. That love carries with it responsibility. That though some things I'm free to do, but I got a responsibility to others. You know, I, I never agreed with what um, I think it was Charles Barkley said. Uh, even though it was truth, technically it was truth, truthful, he made a statement sometimes uh, back saying that, Say, I'm, I'm not your I'm not your child's hero. I'm I'm not responsible for your child, you know. And he's technically he's right. But he's narrow in his scope. I think he was narrow in his scope of understanding his own influence and the influence of professional athletes. So the responsible professional athlete who knows kids are watching him is not just saying, Well, I can do what I want to do. This is my life. I can do I can do what I want to do. I can go. He's right. He can do what he wants to do. He can go where he wants to go. He can say what he wants to say. But the loving professional athlete is considerate of the platform that he now has, how that platform, his voice can affect not just one person, but thousands, possibly millions of people. And so now he's living his life in such a way, not to him himself in and curtail all of his freedoms, but he's living his life in such a way that I care about that six-year-old that's watching me. I care about that teenage kid that's watching me, that's going to do what I do. So if I go, if I explode on the, on the, on the court and, and cuss everybody out and, and, and do all these antics, there's somebody watching me that's saying it's okay. And we see it all the time. We see young athletes acting just like the professional athletes. Because the professional athletes give it a, a an endorsement that goes and makes it look like it's just okay to sometimes be a jerk. You know, it's not if you are responsible. If you're not responsible and it's all about you, be the biggest jerk you want to be. What's it matter? It's your life, right? But if you want to be responsible, and if we as Christians want to be responsible, let's take into consideration how our actions affect our other Christian brothers. So, let's keep on reading here. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, verse uh, what is that? 17, I think. But it is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. So he says here that, um, that the kingdom of God, if you really need the understanding of it, it's really not about eating and drinking what you eat or drink and all those religious order. It's more than that. It's about righteousness. In other words, looking out for other people, doing for other people, as God has done for us, treating people with equity and equality, realizing where people are coming from. That's why sometimes in the jurisdiction, in, in, in the, uh, the uh, ah, gosh, what's the word? In the juvenile uh, 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 court system, sometimes it doesn't take a rocket science to know that, that there's some 
penalties are too harsh for the individual that is getting. And, and sometimes I don't understand why a person would want to lock a kid down that's 13 years old for the rest of his life and put him in prison, not taking into account maybe some, some, some really dire situations that this kid may have come out of, may have been a product of. And then, and then we're like, well, it's just equal. This car carries a life sentence. What? Yeah. But I want you to think for just a minute. If that were your child, would you be willing to lock them away forever? Throw away the key. Think of them no longer. Or would you take into account some things that got them where they are and then uh, look at a, an equitable uh, punishment? Like taking all that is in account. Is it, is it equitable? Is it right knowing this child, child came from a broken family and, and that the father was not in the home and, and that the child was abused at an early age? Um, we're going to take all that into account before we give them this sentence. So, the, so, so uh, here it's telling us that the kingdom of God is based upon that which is righteous and just and equitable and looking out for others, and, and peace. It seeks for harmony. It seeks for unity and joy, the gladness, the whole happiness. Does that sound like what you're experiencing in your life? Are you experiencing in your life as a Christian righteousness and peace and joy? Or are you experiencing rules and regulations and damnation and, and all those things that make us not even want to be a part of a group? Well, it should be the, the former. It should be righteousness, peace, and joy. That we are happy. <laughs> that we are exceedingly glad to be in this wonderful family of God whose king knows everything about us and still loves us. Whose king didn't give us what we deserve but gave us his own life, righteousness, and made peace with us who were at once at enmity with him. And then the joy of the Lord. I think if we walk with Jesus the way the, way the, the, the disciples did, and we can in our hearts, I think we'll be amazed at how free-flowing that relationship is. Yeah, he's going to call you on the carpet a few times. Yeah, he's going to confront us in love. But I just think that Jesus is probably the most wonderful to be around to talk to, to be transparent with. And I believe he'd have us rolling at times. I believe sometimes we'll just, we'll just laugh because he's like, he's so keen and, and so wise and so witty that he can make us laugh while never defying the truth. That's my Jesus. That's my king. I enjoy him. I hope you're enjoying him because that's the kingdom of God. Righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. Let me move on here. Verse 18, whoever thus serves Christ is acceptable to God and approved by men. How do we serve Christ? Just following his command. What is his command? His command is that we bow down and confess him as Lord. That's our obedience. That we submit to his lordship. Okay? And that's acceptable to God. Acceptable God and approved by men. So then let us pursue. Everybody say pursue out there. Pursue what makes for peace and for mutual upbuilding. Let's pursue what makes for peace and mutual upbringing. Let's pursue. Let's go after. Let's reach forth. Let's stretch our necks out for that which makes for peace and mutual upbringing. What if every day you and I set out to do just that? That we literally set out to unify and to bring those things that make for upbuilding. That we just every single day stop looking to compete and compare and instead look to unify and upbuild. Boy, 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 boy! Wouldn't that be a different, different existence for each one of us? Like when you look 
at someone, your eyes get real big because you're about to bless them with some upbringing, upbuilding. And you're about to bless them with pursuing some unity as opposed to that which makes for, for uh, uh, unrest. All right, I'm going to lay that on you right now, and, and then I, I think we're going to not get through the rest of it. We'll save that uh, for another day, uh, verses uh, 20 through 23. We'll pick that up hopefully on Sunday, God willing. I hope you've gotten something out of this. I know I have. I know I've preached myself happy this evening. And uh, I hope you gained something tremendous from this. And remember, man, we're in the best family ever, and we should enjoy every single day as we experience righteousness, peace, and joy. God bless you. Hope you've learned something. Remember this month, this coming Sunday is Mother's Day. Hallelujah. Thankful for our mothers. I hope you will, are already planning to do something special for your mother, an acknowledgement, a card, a gift, some money, uh, whatever it is, but acknowledge how great your mothers have been. And for those of you whose mothers have passed on, uh, take a time of remembrance as well this week. God bless you. You know I love you, and I hope this time together has been an experience for you. If you've enjoyed this Bible study, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with someone else. Hit uh, uh, share and, and send it out. The more shares we have, the more people get to experience what you just experienced. And they need to know that Christianity is not some baked, ingrained um, place of rules and regs, but it's a place of life of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. God bless you. I love you. Father, thank you for each and every person watching this tonight. Thank you so much for blessing us with the Word of God. And thank you so much for being on our side, never leaving us and never, ever forsaking us. In Jesus' name, amen.